cataractcoach.com, IOL exchange with UGH syndrome, and an open posterior capsule with visco canaloplasty. Remember, it never place a single piece IOL that's made of acrylic in the sulcus. You don't want to do that. The haptics are too thick. And what ends up happening is this, UGH syndrome, UGH, uveitis, glaucoma, hyphema. And it could be a micro hyphema. It doesn't have to be a big red hyphema. And so in this case, you have those thick arms of that single piece of acrylic lens scraping the back of the iris. And so here we go, dissecting that lens up. Now you can see it is just sitting right there on the sulcus. This is something you should not do. Please don't place a single piece of acrylic lens in the sulcus. It's fraught with issues and complications like this. So this eye well has to be exchanged, and you want to put in a three-piece lens if you're going to place in the sulcus. Ideally, you want it with a smooth, rounded edge. Maybe if there's an intact capsurex, you can do an optic capture with a three-piece lens. But you're going to have to get this lens explanted. Now, this patient also has some chronic glaucoma from this. So here's a two-handed technique. I like this. Sinsky hook in one hand and maybe a, a manipulator in the other. And getting that lens dialed up out of the sulcus and bring it up into the anterior chamber. There we go. Get that other arm up. Get that whole lens on top of the iris. And now a little more viscoelastic. Always good to give yourself some room. Protect that corn endothelium. And let's do a twist and out technique. Okay, no, let's do a cut and out technique. No problem. That works too. Cut the lens in half. Here it is bisected. A hint, don't cut it all the way in half. Cut it 90% in half. And then when you pull one half, then the other half still attached. It comes out kind of like trained boxcars. Now, time for a vitrectomy. Yeah, you got to do a vitrectomy. A little bit of triamcinolone can help stain vitreous if you need to. But you definitely want to do a little bit of a vitrectomy here because undoubtedly in taking that lens out, you did get some vitreous prolapse. Now the patient had an open posterior capsule. Not sure if that's from the original cataract surgery or from a YAG laser capsulotomy that was done later. Not sure why this lens was in the sulcus. But cleaning up, taking your time. Yes, we've sped the video up. Do you know what the settings are for the vitrectomy? Well, if you went to cataractcoach.com, the website, we got a whole section on how to set up the vitrector, how to choose appropriate settings, how to ensure no more vitreous prolapse. You just got to put in the effort to do it. Again, cataractcoach.com. Check it out. It's a lot more data and information than just YouTube. All right. Cleaning it up here now. A little more anti-vitrectomy in the anterior part of the eye here. Being very careful with that vitrector. Do not damage the iris. That vitrector can chew through an iris like no one's business. So you want to avoid that. And now here, just kind of looking around, you want to see what is your level of capsule support here because you need to get the new lens in the eye. And so here we go. A little bit of viscoelastic, probably opening up that sulcus. And there it is. And let's see what the lens choice is going to be. I am think it's going to be a three-piece lens. And let's see. Enlarging the incision. I like the idea too. Enlarge the incision a little bit. Why suffer? Here comes the lens. There's a three-piece lens. Leading haptic goes in. 7L rule. Leading haptic like a number seven. Yeah, just put it on top of the iris if you want to. That's okay. And dial it in. But just make sure it goes, you know, appropriately in the sulcus. There's the thin arms. Yep, in the sulcus. Now, this is a, an acrylic lens. A bit of a square edge on there. A little thicker. You may also want to consider a silicone lens. Three-piece silicone lens, if appropriate. And now just confirming that it's in the appropriate position. And not sure if you can do any sort of optic capture here behind the anterexus, maybe behind the posterior opening. If you can, that helps push the optic away from the iris. Now remember, unlike a single piece acrylic lens where the haptics and optic are totally planar, the lens here, this three-piece lens, there's an angulation at the haptic-optic junction, usually 5 or 10 degrees for most eyewall designs. So the optic sits a little bit more posterior than the plane of the haptics. So there it is. Looks like some meiotic agent being instilled there to bring down the pupil a little bit. That looks good. You want to bring that iris down. And now this patient, again, also needs some treatment for some chronic glaucoma issues. So what are our options here? So let's see what we're going to do here. Tilting the head out of the way. There we go. Probably going to throw up a gonio prism. And now recentering up the scope here. There's the prism. And looks like a canaloplasty device. Maybe the eye track going in there. There you go. Visco canaloplasty. You can get that done too. That's going to help the patient. Well, put the mirror back down, the prism. There it is. And then this patient's going to have a nice outcome. But you know, this could have all been prevented for the original surgeon who's unknown. You got to avoid placing a single piece of acrylic lens. It does not belong in the sulcus. It goes great in the capsule bag. We know that for dang sure. 
but you don't want to place it in the sulcus. For sulcus fixation, if the USA, we don't have purpose-built sulcus IOLs, so we use a three-piece lens with thin haptics, and then hopefully an optic that has an angulation like we talked about, but even also a rounded edge. And there are both acrylic and silicone IOL designs available here in the USA that are appropriate for placement in that ciliary sulcus. So nice case here at the end. Patient had a nice outcome. Hope you enjoyed watching. Yeah, really, you got to go to cataractcoach.com, the website. You need to read the curriculum series about how do you choose anterior vitrectomy settings. It's the only way to find out. You better learn it ahead of time. Gosh, you'd hate to be in the OR and have to look it up while your patient's sitting there with an open globe, right?